At this very moment, currently joining us on our broadcast is Roman Dobrohotov, the editor-in-chief of the publication Insider. Roma, hello. Hello. How do you explain what happened to yourself? Why even such confusion exists about whether they are Russian citizens or citizens of Tajikistan? It still seems unknown. The primary inquiry is resolved presently. We observe that, at the very least, the state has provided us with individuals who perpetrated the act, because at first there was a question of how they could leave so easily, considering that everything was on video cameras. Any activist of ours is detained on the way to any single picket, and here is such a loud terrorist attack. And they cannot present, actually, the attackers themselves. And here, at least, this question is resolved. That is, there is some official version. There are individuals with names who are detained. We have the opportunity to see their faces and make an effort to comprehend their identities by examining their biographies. And most importantly, it will be necessary to compare the detainees' faces with the video frames from the center. And up to this point, we have not observed any photographs from the crocus at City Hall where it would be possible to discern this face either in photographs or in videos. This also raises questions. So if it is all packed with video cameras, there were a substantial number of people with phones, it is strange that we still do not see any photos that we could recognize or identify in any way, shape, or form. Uh, sooner or later, I think they will appear, and then at least we will be able to answer the question, I think, within a day, uh, whether these are the people who were detained at Crocus City Hall. And the primary question that still remains unanswered is whether those recruiters who sent the shooters to Crocus City Hall are truly some kind of ISIS offshoot, or if it was some special services or intelligence agencies involved in orchestrating it. Accordingly, besides the Russian special services, there is no one in particular to suspect here. And I think we will get an answer to this question fairly quickly too. So in the event that the Kremlin at this moment utilizes this terrorist attack as an opportunity to introduce something that they would not have had the courage to do without the occurrence of the terrorist attack, uh, for instance, a large-scale mobilization or a specific military situation, or, to the best of my knowledge, they will send troops to Kyiv, stating that Kyiv is responsible for sending these militants. In general, if there are any special actions where this terrorist attack will become such a justification for the Belly case, then there will be every reason to fear that this terrorist attack was actually organized by the authorities of the Russian Federation, which would indicate their involvement in this tragic event. However, based on the Kremlin's initial reaction so far, it doesn't seem like they have any political justification ready. That is, the customary accusation against Western Ukraine. Here they say terrorists allegedly went to Ukraine, a corridor was provided there, but they were caught in Russia en route to Belarus. However, there are no direct justifications of political supersteps of such magnitude and significance, which Putin will do now. Well, I don't take the death penalty here. It's basically just some chatter of the lower house. And for Putin, it's hardly a fundamental measure. By the way, if he introduces her, she won't be unpopular. So this attack is unnecessary. So it looks like it's a real terrorist attack for now. And the main questions are, where were all these Russian special services uh, who had a warning from the international community two weeks ago about the impending terrorist attack? why there were no enhanced security measures in places where people gather, especially considering that Putin himself demanded two days before that the FSB and his colleagues strengthen counterterrorism work. And we witness that terrorists enter the hall without any hindrance. There is no heightened level of security in place and no visible presence of armed security personnel at all. Therefore, of course, it raises the question of such behavior. Yes, this is a question that we will have to wait for an answer. And in general, this version in which the terrorists say that they were just praying and then their curators wrote to them and told them to do it for 500,000 rubles, not Shrivni, as I also want to note. In this whole legend, there are still a bunch of questions. Nevertheless, I would like to understand why, if it is an Islamic world, then why is it an Islamic world? Because it appears that Vladimir Putin and Russia have recently been showing interest in him, on the contrary. Additionally, the Hamas group expresses support for Russia, 
while the banned ISIS organization seems to be attempting to back Russia at an official capacity and denounces this act of terrorism. When it comes to ISIS, the situation here is considerably more complicated. ISIS has been a formidable adversary of Russia since the outset of the war in Syria. In the past year, Russia has been actively getting closer to Iran, which is also fighting against ISIS. Therefore, unlike Hamas and Hezbollah, ISIS fighters are natural enemies of Russia in this sense, and it is precisely the active rapprochement with Iran that could have been an additional trigger for ISIS to organize this terrorist attack, thus posing a significant threat to Russia's security and stability in the region. Essentially, there were reasons for the existence of ISIS, but lately I wouldn't state that there have been any worsening situations indicating that Russia is not displaying very active behavior in this area. All efforts have been concentrated on Ukraine in recent years. Therefore, if this terrorist attack had occurred five years ago, it would have appeared more comprehensible and anticipated compared to its current perception. However, I reiterate, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, ISIS, is still operational. They persist in carrying out their acts of terrorism, and there have been recent incidents of violence in Iran and other areas. They are currently involved in active development in Afghanistan following the departure of American troops, which has created a vacuum in the region. So, in principle, this is not a meaningless version. However, once again, in order for it to appear more credible, we require additional transparency from the Russian authorities. We still need to observe the video footage captured by the concealed cameras in the city hall building in order to make it look more believable. There should have been hundreds of them. No publications have been made up to this point in time. And uh, in general, we desire to comprehend, for instance, once more, the manner in which these criminals were apprehended and so on and so forth. So I believe that Putin is presently interested, if these are genuinely real terrorists, Putin is interested in disclosing the entire story. Because now in the eyes of the public, Putin himself is the main suspect. Not only among the opposition, but in general, Russians are typically highly skeptical of all explanations given by Russian television, despite the fact that they actively watch it on a regular basis. And that's why I think Putin will definitely want to somehow justify his version that all this was prepared from abroad. But we don't see it yet. So far, some information is very fragmentary. These beaten people are saying something into the camera because it is clear that if you beat up any person and cut off his ear, he will confess that he killed Kennedy. Therefore, there is minimal significance in these appreciative testimonies. Thus, it is premature to analyze anything at this point. However, I reiterate that having the identities of these individuals enables us, as impartial investigators, to comprehend their genuine life stories and verify their potential links to the Islamic underground in their previous place of residence prior to this act of terrorism and so forth. Thanks a lot. In the end, a clarifying question. After all, Volodya, I'll clarify a small question. Ruslan Leviev said that based on the logic of current events, more terrorist attacks can be expected in the future, including an increase in such attacks in Russia due to lack of interaction between Russian and Western special services resulting in a failure to hear and heed warnings. Your view on this matter? Undoubtedly, we have now witnessed that the warnings issued by Western intelligence agencies were completely disregarded and ignored. In addition, Putin referred to it as a provocation and blackmail. The reason behind the existence of this blackmail is unclear. So he is so blinded by the war with the West that he ignores obvious threats. It is unclear how this terrorist attack will change the situation that is, whether it will affect the fact that Russian special services will remember that Russia actually has real enemies and that it is not Ukraine, but Islamic fundamentalists who are really very dangerous. We will determine if any extra measures will be implemented in the close proximity. However, from an objective standpoint, Russia presently has significantly fewer resources for this, as a genuinely enormous amount of forces has been deployed on one hand in the war, and on the other hand, in the fight against the opposition. And merely engaging in combat on three fronts is consistently a highly difficult task. Clearly, the presence of terrorists in this location was not a priority for Putin. Navalny's supporters are significantly more dangerous from his perspective. Hence, I believe that objectively, it is quite challenging to arrange security under these circumstances. Furthermore, when you achieve success, there are gaps in the borders caused by the war, 
not only RDK has the ability to cross this border, but practically anyone can do so. Always such a chaotic situation where there are weapons present, where it is generally challenging to maintain control over safety. There might exist fundamentalists who can infiltrate there. Incidentally, I do not rule out the possibility that if these were genuine fundamentalists, they might have successfully infiltrated from Ukraine as well, simply because it could have been more convenient for them given the ongoing war and inadequate control. Yes, terrorist attacks can be repeated, and in the absence of any public and other control of the special services, they are not particularly motivated to actually catch real terrorists if Putin himself does not consider them the main threat. If society has no pressure, pressure tools on law enforcement agencies, independent media, and independent parties are absent, which further hinders the efforts to combat terrorism effectively. What is their motivation to actively engage in real counterterrorism activities on the ground? Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, you can show your support. How can you do that? Please like this video. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel Khodorkovsky Live yet, do it.